Hello class, good evening. How are you doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Hello, Robert. Enjoy your meal. Hi, good evening, Mister. Thank you so much. Good. I was having a candy bar, candy <laughs> chocolate. Yeah, nice. candy chocolate. Nice. I'm glad. So that's that's good. It's good to know. I'm just trying to you not know, turn my hand on. To me today. So how's everything, guys? How was your day? Uh, you know, what can you tell me about your week? How was it? It was a swamp week. Yeah. What is it? It's like busy week. Okay, so many things to do, right? A lot of activities I can see. All yeah, right. many things to do. Many things to do, right? Nice. Well, um, I'm glad to see you guys again. Today is Friday. And it's the very last day of the week, right? It's interesting because it's Friday, but it's also we're basically starting a new month, right? And I want to start with this quick reflection. There is a very common phrase that American people say, which is, thank God it's Friday. Have you heard it before? If that's the case, we usually say uh, TGIF, like TGIF. Uh, it's not that common, but it's still, you know, you might hear it from time to time that people say only TGIF. That is because um, we finished the week. Okay. So thank you so much for connecting. Um, it's December 1st, 12, which is nice. We're starting a new month. This is the last month of the year. This is the last day of the week. And thank God it's Friday. Okay. And like it says here, hello weekend. I don't know if you guys have plans for the weekend. And I don't know what your plans are, but then whatever you do, look up first. You know, thank you so much for joining in. And uh, we're gonna start today's session with a very quick review. But I want to know you guys are listening to me. So please uh, maybe open your microphone and tell me how your day was or send me a message on via chat, meeting chat, you know. Say, hey, you know, I'm doing good or and so. Something, say something on the chat. Just you know, express something. All good. All good so far, Brenda, David, Jenny, all good, Selena, Jocelyn. I don't see your cameras on, I don't know why. <laughs> you have problem with your cameras? Okay, Um. so if you listen to me, send me a message on the chat. Because um, I want to make sure you guys listen to me. I have only heard Robert, but I haven't heard any anything from anybody else. Mm -hmm. No, you don't want to talk to me. You don't, you don't want to chat with me. <laughs> Since say something. Well, I just want to make sure you guys listen to me. Robert, you listen to me very good. Am I right? Jaime, do you listen to me? Yes, teacher. Okay, so thank you so much for confirming. That is really important for me to know that you guys understand or that you guys listen to me, you know, clearly. Because otherwise, I don't want to have problems. Like, um, maybe with, um, I don't know, with the connectivity. I don't want to have problems with the, you know, audio and so if we make if we can make a correction that's good no problem sonia so that's that's okay that happens well tgif thank god it's friday we're going to start uh with a very quick review and uh for that i would like to check on so to neither and either and i want to know if you remember the formula of each of them so let's start by doing this Let's uh, do this a little bit fast because we don't have much time. So, 
who can tell me the formula to use so? What is the formula to use so? I'm going to give one minute. Uh, we use so to express agreement, right? When something is affirmative, when something is positive, right? We also use to to express agreement when we want to say the same idea, right? But there's a formula. What goes first, what goes next, and what is it, and how is it? Anybody? Um, I remember the first word that it has to go is so after the that thing is the verb or module verb and then is the subject for affirmative yes that's correct right auxiliary that is for so thank you so much i appreciate it and what about for two uh robert says using two pronoun auxiliary verb and two yes uh-huh very good now uh, we have been given the two formulas Roberto Guzman says about using two, and I think Robert said already the formula to use. Um, so basically we have mentioned the two of them. So and two, that's exactly correct. What about neither and either? Mm. Uh, hmm? With uh, either is pronoun, plus auxiliar auxiliary uh, plus model that is with either you said right mm -hmm. exactly if it is for either and either we use them mostly for um negative right no notation then uh, we use first neither, and then what's next? Neither. Neither plus auxiliary. Plus auxiliary plus pronoun. Pronoun. Cool. Thank you so much. And what about either? Either. Pronoun. Uh, pronoun. Uh, plus. Auxiliary. Plus auxiliary. Plus modal verb. Plus, uh -huh, or modal verb, auxiliary, or modal verb, uh -huh. Hasta ahí no <laughs> creo. <laughs> and then, yeah, after you, you can say either, but then something important happens here. If it is, if it is either the auxiliary verb or the modal verb should be in a specific, um, structure and do you know what that is let's say because i cannot simply say auxiliary or whatever because I, there's something else that i have to mention when we're using either is either like uh, used with affirmative or negative auxiliaries what do you remember let me give an example because i know Either is the one that we haven't that we haven't um mentioned that correct form yet. So if I say I I don't I don't what I don't I don't go, I don't visit, I don't eat, I don't eat, I don't eat um what hamburgers or pizza, pizza. I don't eat pizza. So how do you express agreement? I don't either right well when i say i don't i don't i don't either i'm using i'm using what i'm using uh, this is subject or pronoun auxiliary but and either but the auxiliary is placed in Move. negative exactly negative and then the other way to express you know the um, agreement is with neither but neither changes so i can say Neither, neither, neither do I, because the auxiliary, auxiliary is, is simple present, neither do I. 
That's how it is, right? And then the informal one we've learned is what? Me? Neither. That's the informal one, right? That's informal, that's it. Well, because it's simple present, but if it was simple past, we might change don't, we might say didn't, if it's future, we might say better to be, or even will, or depending on the, on the modal verb or, or, or the auxiliary being used. Okay, this topic, we've been practicing, we've been talking about it for a couple of, of classes, guys, and today we're going to leave this topic for some time. We're gonna uh, focus on a, on a new modal verb, Maybe you already started. Before I, I, I begin to explain about the next model bear, I know you probably already you know, watched the video and finished the platform, but I would like to ask, do you have any specific question about the, the, the platform, about the midterm? Because today is Friday and we must you know, finish the midterm. Have you guys completed the midterm? Can you send me a chat on like now to say if you are finished already? I want to know who finished. Because uh, for us, it's very crucial. If you have any question, I mean, that's what I'm here for. I need to know so I can address it and we can clarify it. So tell me. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I want to let you know something. Uh -huh. uh, I, 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 as I see, uh, you didn't realize that they gave us the whole answer for the yeah. whole Somebody section. Did. Yeah, I did. We did it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who did that actually. That's not that's not supposed to be done. I saw the I saw the I saw the the screenshot. You know? And the purpose class, I know, but even like this, Robert, you can have the answer, but maybe some of some of you or even having the answer, you haven't uh, checked on the platform yet, you haven't finished, that can also happen. And um another thing which is important. I, since you guys have already pre-intermediate, you might not face this problem, but sometimes when we use contracted form, the apostrophe doesn't work, the one, if it's not the correct one on the, for the platform, that's something that maybe you already know. But uh, in case it happens, you remember, right? Remember like those tips, like making sure there's no blank in between or unnecessary blanks or that the correct platform after the correct apostrophe is being used and so on. And then once again, my recommendation is not to try to do it like uh, yourself, but not, don't cheat. Like make sure you, you guys um, start working on, on the exercises yourself and then you can check on the answer. So we have a meaningful learning. Otherwise you're gonna be just cheating and at the end the effective one is gonna be you. you know, that's that's uh, what I can tell you. So do not uh, just cheat and then do not take it easy because in the long run, the effect is going to be you, okay? So I'm going to move on. I'm going to change the activity. I want you to please uh, take a look at the next uh, pronunciation and stress point. And just go ahead. I'll give you one minute for you to read it. And then I'll, I'll ask you know, how it is pronounced, making sure we stress you know, the responses. All right, so maybe you went through already the, you know, this pronunciation and maybe you already listened to the platform pronunciation. So can I have a volunteer to read or to pronounce the first column, just the first column. Well, we have this circle, the circle is because there we have to stress. That's the syllable that we have to stress. So just one, please, any volunteer. Thank you so much, Robert. Roberto Guzman. Uh, I do too. I am too. I can too. All right, thank you so much. So that's the first one, right? I do too. I am too. So making a little bit of a stress in the, in the last syllable. The, something similar happens in the next column. So I need another volunteer to read it. 
See, hi, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Go ahead. So I do. So I am. So can I. So can I, right? So am I. So can I. So do I. Very good. So yes, like, so do I. All right. And so am I. And that's perfectly correct. Thank you. And now this is what we've been talking, right? How to use either. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you so much, Sonia. Go ahead. I don't either. I not either. I can either. I say can't either. Either. The syllabus stress is right, just right there, like Sonia just did it. Thank you so much. And then once again, a, a reminder is that we use auxiliary in negative, right? I'm not, can't, and don't, because either it's, uh, you know, it requires a negative auxiliary or a negative modal verb. And we finish with the last column. One volunteer, please. Anybody? Who can help us? Really? Thank you so much, Diego. I appreciate your, your participation. Go ahead, please. Uh, neither do I, neither am I, and neither can I. Okay, neither. As you can see, neither do I, like same pattern, like with, with so do I, and neither do I, the stress is placed on the pronoun, right? So do I, neither do I, neither, neither or neither, right? That's, that's perfectly fine. Well, so that's the last, that was the last, um, Reminder, that was the last review about the use of so, to, either, and neither. Now we're going to move on to a different topic. Uh, do you have any question, any uh, doubt that you might want to bring, you know, so we can discuss it before we get started with the next activity? Were you doing good, Jocelyn Rodriguez? No questions? All good? Iselda, all good? Selena, Fatima, Christian, all good, Brenda, no questions? Fredo is, yes, as a listener, he's saying. Okay, um, well, then uh, we're gonna move on to the next topic. Then if there are no questions, there are no answers as well. So let's move on. Let's see. Our next topic is about uh, ordering a meal, right? Ordering a meal is the topic. Maybe you already heard it, you already practice it, but I still need to go over these. And then I want some volunteers to help me being the waiter and the customer. So who wants to be the waiter? Waiter? No waiters here. I know there's many of you who can help. Roberto Guzman, the waiter, and Janita is going to be the customer. Cool. I like it. Thank you so much. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Go. May I tell you order? Yes. I like the lamb. Uh, teacher, is the word is kebabs? Kebabs? Uh, Al final. Kebabs. Yeah, the stress is, is in the last syllable. Kebabs. Kebabs. Okay. kebabs. kebabs. Okay. All right. All right. And what you like a salad? Yes, I'll have a mixed green salad. Okay. What kind of dressing would you like? We have blue cheese and vinaigrette. Blue cheese, please. And would you like anything to drink? Yes, I like a large iced tea, please. So much. Do you know what uh, kebabs are? Do you know these ones? Have you ever eaten? Maybe we don't have exactly the same as, uh, but they might change depending on the, you know, the cuisine or the uh, culture. Do you know what these these are? Like the kebabs. You know what that is, guys. It's uh, ever... Arabian food. Mm, yeah, I, I think. I'm not sure it's just Arabian food, but I maybe that's the origin, right? That's origin. But then we can have a, like, um, let's see, we can create a recipe on our own, like with our own ingredients, but trying to, you know, maybe cheat 
on their their recipes and we can create it. But yeah, I, I think that's the origin. But then here in El Salvador, what is the similar? What is something similar that we have with the kebabs? Similar? It's similar to a balada. Oh, maybe like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other? Any other that you might? When you see a picture of of kebabs, what come? What other type of food? You know, can, can you relate with this? Is that the only one? What do you guys think? Maybe you have eaten something similar. I don't know. And then we use different ingredients, different um, type of uh, vegetables to, to, to do it, to make it. Or maybe if you are studying about um, you know, cooking, you you can tell us about how it is prepared and stuff like that. Anybody else? No? There are... Um, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and the when the customer say, uh, the as uh, waiter, okay, mm -hmm. what kind of dressing would you like? Mm -hmm. What I mean, what kind dressing, of dressing? Dressing, yo lo entiendo como otro grupo. Yeah, dressing in this case is not talking about it is not talking about clothes. It's talking about what will accompany, you know, the the meal, right? Something. If if you see what kind of dressing. Would you like like we like we have blue cheese and and vinaigrette. Dressing is more like in this context, like um, something that will accompany the meal. It's like ingredients or that will accompany the meal. Or let's see, dressing. Uh, there's a word to to to, to this. Uh, let's see what dressing do you would you like? Uh, and then they offer you the type of 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 uh, things that you can order to accompany. Like when you go when you go to Buffalo Wings, for example, they tell you, okay, these are the sauces that we have. So which one would you like to choose? And they give you the original buffalo and and um and some other that they have. So those are the dressings for you to accompany the food. It's not talking about clothes it's not talking about that at all it's more like uh what's the flavor or ingredients that you want to choose to accompany your your main dish or your main course so that's what it is don't take it too literally because it's not literally okay so then what what okay. words come to your mind when you listen to the word dressing here what, what words come to your mind in our own language it's according to context uh -huh, exactly. In this case, it's according to the to the to the context. It's not like dressing something. No, it's like dressing, but that will accompany your your main course or your main main dish. So if we have to look for a specific uh, word that accompany or uh, to translate it into into our into our own language, what do you think it can be? One anything. Like um, let's see. You go to a restaurant. They have different type of of um, sauces, I think, yeah, that you can use. And if you order a salad, for example, they, they give you extra dressings so you can put on the salad and that will make the salad, like, you know, more delicious, And but you will have to choose which is the flavor you want. So what is the word that you can think about to say it in Spanish? Anybody from the class that can try to um, look for the word that we're looking for? Eh, ¿Qué tipo de aderezo le gustaría? That's the one. That's the one exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly the one we need to we need to use. It's not about. It's not about um, dressing something. It's about you know the the type of flavor you want to you know use in your company. And thank you, thank you so much for saying it. That's the word. You know, aderezo. That's the one. And what about kebabs? Nobody said to me about kebabs. You know, that's something that we have in our in our country that is very similar to, to kebabs. What do we say in Spanish? I I um suggest maybe you can uh do it right now if you have access to the internet, write only only kebabs and, and see what are the images 
that you are displayed. And you'll see that we do we have that in our country, but we do it our own way, you know, with our own recipe. Can you do that exercise right now? Go to Google and then and then um click on images, and you'll find, you know, many uh many type of kebabs that that we can that we can have in our country with our own culture, with our with our own, you know, recipe. Well, in case you don't have the access to that, you can see write the word down and then maybe you have even already eaten one and you know what, what this is about. Now, um, let's see what else. What is the, the modal verb that we have on this conversation? The modal verb that we're gonna be using? Actually, the, there is there is more than one, but we're gonna be choosing just one. So what is it, the one? I know you have already watched the videos on the platform. So what is the one of the, especially that this, this class will be focused on? Do you know? Can you try to identify that on this conversation? Ah, okay. The first one, the weather, when the waiter say may, and then I would like, and then the same would, and then the 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 more model bear to press push future that is double L um, and then we got wood again and we can have we can use as a model bear the bird have and this one I can see that but in that one is like using like a bird mm -hmm. and wood yeah those are those are all Okay, yeah, thank you so much. You you already pointed, you know, the ones that are that I was looking for. Yeah, in this case, we have blue cheese and vinaigrette. It's not the verb have is working. I mean, this word is working as a verb, not as a modal verb, as you just mentioned. Okay, perfect. Then once again, we have the first the first one, which is may I. May I take your order? May I is our modal verb. But then let's focus more on the use of wood. Wood. This is the one. Wood. So, so I know you guys are already familiar with the, the use of wood. I want you to ask a question to anybody in this class. With would you? Anybody? So you can say the name, or you can even say my name. And they ask the question. With would you? Please. I'll give you one minute. So the point is to use would you in a sentence. This one. Open your microphone and ask me a question or ask anybody a question using would you. I got one question for you. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Uh, would you like to learn an, a new language? Yes, that's a great question. Actually, I was studying French, but I, I didn't continue due to so many things. And what about you? Would you like to learn a new language? <laughs> um, I can say up to now I'm good. Maybe the next year, like in the next six months of the next year, I would like to learn another one. But right now, I think English is enough. Okay, with your participation, that brings me to the next to the next um uh, question that I want I wanted to add. What and then you use a noun. What a noun and would you, for example, what language would you like to learn? Yeah, that's, that's for me. I would yeah, like that's... to learn. Yeah, I would like to learn. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I would like to learn the same language that you gave up. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so French, French is the one, right? Yeah, I believe yeah, I like you know, that. French, it's, they say that if you know English and Spanish, French is going to be uh, easier to, to understand it, but I don't know, maybe. So yeah, class, thank you so much for your participation, Robert. Uh, now, using wood, chew, or maybe you can use a... um. What is a, a WH word to ask a question using wood? The formula I just gave is one choice, but that can that, that can be changed too. For example, I, I can say, uh, where would you blah blah blah? When would you uh, or how much and so on? So I want to know if you know how to ask questions using would you. 
using like WH words as well. So anybody, please uh, send me your ideas on the chat. So that's my, my question is, how do, how do you use would in questions and also in affirmative? But as of now, let's focus on questions. And these questions can be yes, no questions or open-ended questions with WH word. So I'm gonna give like uh, maybe three minutes and think about one possible question. What can we say about what is what is really formal and polite? It's more like it's very polite, honestly, when we, when we use word. So let's stay three minutes, but please, I wanna have 21 sentences, I mean, 21 questions on the chat because we are connected 22, including me. Let's see, thank you so much. I have some questions here already. And then is, um, would you like to drink coffee? Thank you, Janita. Would you, would you like to play soccer? You're missing two, Jaime. Would you like to eat pizza? Nicely done, only three. What about the other ones? The ones who already create one, which is the we would. Now think about one question using any WH word that you can you can think about. Any idea about with WH word. Would you like to go to the beach? Would you like to visit me tomorrow? Nice. Okay. Would you like to drink? Would you like to drink something? You're missing two. Would you like to go out tonight? Exactly like you, you can make a very polite. You know, invitation to someone. Would you like to go out tonight? To just, would you like to travel to another country? Nice, Diego. Very good. Send me more examples, please. I want to. I want to make sure you guys are clear on this topic because that's the mission for today's class. How to use wood? I give you two more minutes. Would you like to, to go to the cinema with me? Exactly. Well, in that case, like to go, right? Would you like to go? Now, let's take some time because I want to read questions, but with WH words. WH word. Let's see who, who's the first one who can create one. Question with WH word. Do you know how to create one question with WH word? I'm gonna give you an example here on the screen so you can see it. I can say, why, it's a WH word, why would, why would you, why would you like to go to Spain, I say this. Just to give you an idea. Why would you like to go to Spain? And then you answer it according to the, the question, right? What would you like to go to Spain? And then I have the first one. Thank you so much, Roberto. Uh, what kind of food would you like to have for dinner? Nice. Would you like to go to the gym? Yes. There's a little bit more that I want to express about the use of food, but I want to know you guys understand. So please send me your messages, send me your ideas, or open your microphone and say, hey, I really understand the topic, 
And then um, something that I want to mention about wood before you guys continue is that where we know that wood is formal, wood is for light, right? And also wood requires the base form of the verbs so we can use them, right? The tense we are as of now studying. Now that I want I want to say something I want to say that personally helped me a lot when you know using wood is that when I use wood in this tense, my verb becomes uh, into ia in Spanish, like it turns into ia ending. Okay, maybe you already knew this, but if you didn't know, we can make some examples. So this idea, you know, is clearer. If I say, uh, "Would you like the Spanish form is te gustaría," right? If I say, "Would you go," that would be like irías. Would you go, Irias? Right? If I say, uh, would you eat? Would you eat? That is, comerías, right? So as you can see, my verb is being transformed into ia, ending in Spanish. I really hope this is clear. If I say, like now in an affirmative way, um, I would go, that means I would go. Yo iría, right? You see? Um, like if I say I wouldn't, like negative form, so you expand this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. How would you translate I wouldn't do it? Guys, any any Spanish version for this is to make sure we are understanding that how wood is affecting our main verb. How would you say I wouldn't do it? Anybody, please. Guys. I'm a little poco calladito. So you're like a little bit quiet. I don't know why. It's Friday, right? It's Friday, but it's still. So how will you translate, I wouldn't do it? Why would you like to play soccer? So yeah, that's a good one. Okay, let me, let me explain once again. When I use wood, we have learned in this session that wood is to make requests, to make a formal, and but more than formal, is a polite you know, request, something like when you say wood because you're very polite. But then I have just said that when I use wood with the base form of a verb, the wood transform my verb into ear ending. That is why if I change the idea just for you to expand on your, you know, learning, if I say, would you go and instead of would you like? So it, it means the irías, right? If I say, would you eat comerías? I will go, yo iría, right? But then I can also make negatives. So if I say, I wouldn't do it, what does it mean in Spanish? Hello, Aria. Yo no lo haría, exactly. Thank you so much. So basically, thank you for your participation. When we have wood, my verb is affected into into ia ending. So then, how would you say? How would you say? Um, yo no visitaría a mi mejor amigo el fin de semana. How do you say that? Or maybe this other one, yo no comería demasiada comida rápida. And then you can add a I compliment. Uh -huh. I will eat it. I will eat uh, food. Um, rap, no, rapid food? No, huh? oh, I don't know. It's fast food. Fast food. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. So just make sure, Diego, you say the the moreover in negative form. So can you say it one more time, please? I would, I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't eat uh, fast food. Exactly, I wouldn't eat fast food. And then you can say, because if I eat, I would get fat and so on. That would depend on, the, on your compliment. But thank you so much, that's the idea. Now, there's something else that I want to mention about the use of wood. 
And this is how to use contractions. If I say, I like this, I go, you know, I'm saying I would go. You follow me on this? Yes. But if I say, let's say like, I'm gonna say like, like, I have to stick to the same verse so it, I don't lose that, that the example. So I'll go is I would go, same thing. But if I say I gone, do you know what's the what what's the um, what is the full form of I gone? Guys, do you see what I'm doing here? I go, it means I would go. But I've gone, what is the full form? Anybody? I'll go, Iria. Iré. Mm -hmm. So I'll go, yo iría. It's the same as I would go, same idea. My question is if I say I'll go, what is the full form? Oui. The full form? Um, did I go? I see that as a past perfect. Exactly. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job, brother. Exactamente. Esto es importante y no sé si no me responden porque no se comprende. Yo sé que ya lo comprendió Robert. Yo lo puedo decir en español. No, no worries. Si tenemos el I go, si mi verbo está en base, base form y está en presente, ese contraction of apostrophe D se refiere a would, como está aquí, I would go. But, like Robert already uh, mentioned, si el verbo está en past participle, if my verb is in past participle, then the I D here, the, the apostrophe D here, is not referring to would, it's referring to had which is known as past perfect, okay? Eso es importante distinguirlo. How do we dis distinguish it? How do we differentiate this? Simple by looking at the verb tense, como lo acaba de hacer Robert, the way, just, the way Robert just did it, okay? The tense of the verb plays an important role. And I wanted to mention that because as you can see, I'm, gonna, I'm going to erase at this moment. Um, I wanted to mention that because as you can see here, we have one, um, hold on, we have one example with a contraction for I like, but this I like positive P is good. Diego, were you going to ask anything? Uh, yes, uh, excuse me, I got lost. Uh, this contraction is uh, different. And is a variable uh, for the for the verb, right? Yes, it's the same contraction, the same contraction, but that will depend on the verb that, that goes with the with the auxiliary. It's the same contraction. Oh. Like like if I do this, Diego, let's say I do this, and I I don't give you any uh, any other word or any other context. This specific one can mean I would or I had. How do I know is would or how do I know is is uh, had, depending on the base form. If I said I had, like, let's, ch let's change verb. I eat. Well, in this case, you know that is your comedia. But if I do this, I eaten, then it's not your comedia, is you have comido, it's past perfect, you see? So even oh, cool. even even if the contraction is the same, what I'm saying this is what I'm trying to tell you. The meaning changes because of the tense, the verb it is given. The tense of the verb, el tiempo del verbo es lo que afecta el significado. Okay. okay, and then just keep that in mind because it's the same, the same something similar que le puedo decir el esto cuando tenemos um esto she's She's and she's. Oh, using third person. You know, I'm giving, telling you this because that's what I can think about right now. If I say she's, she's gone. Um, and what well, she's, 
she's excellent. She's she's smart. Let's say she's smart. She's smart. Well, in this case, this contraction she's gone is like she has gone, mm -hmm. right? But then she's smart. Is not she? She has a smart. Basically, here she is smart. You see. So our context, our or where you're using the structure will give you another the idea. I know this is practice. When you're writing, you know, it's easier, but then when you're speaking, you have to pay attention to the verb tense so you don't lose the intended meaning. That's that's my point. So I want to make sure this is also explained because if we are talking about wood, you know, we need to understand the contractions and all the differences. So just to wrap up, just to conclude, I have mentioned that would transform the verb into ia. If I were you, if I were you, and if I didn't know about this, I would write it down. Whenever I use would with a base form, my verb will be transformed into ia ending. For example, I would pay yo pagaría. I would listen yo escucharía. Would you listen escucharías? So that would Basically, that's important because that's how the verb is changed in a Spanish form, like via ending. And then second aspect I mentioned is the contraction. So we can distinguish it from past perfect. And the, what is key is the verb tense. Do you have questions, guys? Do you have questions? Any questions before we move on? Pregunta de esto. ¿Se entiende lo que estamos hablando? Is it big what we're trying to explain here? Los Friday vienen bien calladitos. O sea, you, you can't really, really like quiet. That is like that because we are super tired. I know you know what we, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's <laughs> it's it's Friday. Well, it's a big excuse. I know. All right, so let's see. Um, then no problem. But then I, I'm, let's say, if you are understanding, if you have the idea, for me it's I'm happy with that. But then if you don't understand and if you don't say I don't understand then it's that's that's sad because i'm supposed to be here and provide you with more examples so that the topic is clear but if you know if you don't understand and you don't ask that's a problem you see let's move on let's move on if you have questions just interrupt me and then say to me you know whatever you want me to explain again i'll do my best to explain it again let's move on because there are some ideas that we have to cover and we only have like 10 more minutes approximately grammar focus this is what I was trying to explain already, but then let's go over this. Questions. I'm going to choose Fatima. Fatima, Fatima, please read the first question. This one. What would you like? Now the, the answers, please. Yeah, I like the lamb kibat. Huh? I have a small salad. Salad, thank you so much. Okay, and here we have the contraction of, of I'll, I will, I'd, I would. Okay, this is what we already explained. <clears throat> now, let's see, I'm going to choose David Armando. Read this next question here, please. This one, Armando. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, teacher. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, what king on dressing wall do you like? Nice, thank you so much. And I'd, like, uh -huh. uh, I'd like blue cheese, please. Yeah, I have vinaigrette. Come, come on, say it. Mm -hmm. Vinaigrette. Like vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. Nice. As you can see, once again, we have what kind of dressing would you like? As you can see, this is a, a open question because it's using like like the previous one. What kind of dressing? And then and then we use our our, our modal verb, which is good. 
output, you know, request. Now, let's continue. I need one more volunteer. Let's see. Okay. Gonna check one. Karen Castillo. Karen, read the next one, please. This one. What word do you like to drink? And the answer is? Is late and and como se dice it's stay. I still yeah, I still I still I still I like I still okay the second one Alex I have coffee I have coffee good thank you so much so we have here, I like, and then a nice tea, and then I'll have coffee. Good. And the last one is a close ended answer. So let's see. I'm going to choose this time, Christian Rodriguez. Read the question, Christian. The last, the last one here. This one. Just read it, only read it. Okay, let's choose another one. And see, I'm gonna choose, maybe this one is not, it's, it's easy. And then let's see, I'm going to choose then uh, Selena. Selena, please. Selena asked the question and Vladimir responds because I saw Vladimir's hands up. Yeah, Selena asked the question. Please. Would you like uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. What's the answer, Vladimir? Yes, yeah, please. I like some word. Not thanks to that I'll be all. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, yes, please, I like some water. No, thank you. That'll be all. That'll, that'll be all. Nice. Okay. Cool. And this is like, this is this question is closed because it's would you like. It doesn't have a WH word. Okay, guys, since this is the topic, I want now to, you know, go over some let me erase this part because the time is going really fast. Let's try to create some ideas with the formulas. This is the formula. And I know you already saw it. We can use wood. Pay attention. How do we pronounce the mora? It's wood, like W O D wood. You don't pronounce the letter L. No, it's not necessary. Wood, that's it. Wood, 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 wood. So you can say a wood, and it's fine. So wood plus subject plus like plus infinitive verb plus complement. So this is the formula. You already provided me with some examples. Okay, the example given here is would you would you like to drink tea? That's the example. And once again, make you're making request politely, right? That's that's key. Let's continue. Let's continue. And the next idea is this one. And we can also make sentences, right? And we can use WH words. And I already provided you with some ideas, the WH word. And these are the, these are the ideas. Let's see. Um, what would you like to eat for dessert? So what would you like to eat for dessert? We use a WH word. This is also possible. Okay, remember that. After the WH word, you know what comes next, it remains the same. Like would, would, subject, place form, and so on. So we just need to uh, add the WH word. Now, uh, before we finish the class, we're going to create sentences and questions to the next, uh, to the next we're gonna answer the next question. So let's see, what would you like to drink? At this moment, what would you like to drink? Be honest. Open your microphone and speak. Speak with me. What would you like to drink? I like. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
Oh, I like wing. I like wing. I like beer. A cold, a cold one. An, an heladita one. <laughs> okay. What do you say, Jaime? I like drink Coca-Cola. Okay, I like drink Coca-Cola. Nice. Anybody else? Any más? What would you like to drink? Solo respondamos la pregunta. Yes, let's just only respond to this question. What would you like to drink? Alguien de Uh huh. I would. I would like to. I would like a drink ice coffee. Okay. Um, a cold coffee, like frozen, something like this. Okay. Okay, and the last one, let's see, let's move on. This is only the the, the answer, but what about a, you know, it's a sentence, like affirmative one. Can you give me an example? Plus, this is subject plus like, plus word plus like plus complement. That's, that's, that's the formula. Give me one example following the formula. You already, you already did it. One. One example. Whatever comes to your mind. She, they, you can, you can change the subject. Jaime, Bur, uh, Roberto, Usman, Bur. You can say that because subject you know, can also be changed into a different one. Any any volunteer? Just I got one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I would like to go to sleep, but doesn't gonna happen because I'm gonna stay up late because I'm gonna I'm gonna be studying a little bit more. Nice, you know, and I wanna say the following before we finish. What Robert Beltran is saying it's he is demonstrating that he knows you know how to speak the language. Y quiero finalizar con esta idea cuando usted ya esté está en ese nivel. Mire, haga lo que Roberto acaba de hacer. Dos cosas voy a mencionar. Una, la respuesta era corta, pero él decía ser larga. That's good. Cuando proporciona más detalles, usted se reta. Entonces quede con una respuesta corta. You try to expand, you try to be very explicit on your answer. One thing. Y la otra que quería hacer. Do what he's going to do. Study. Stay up late, develese, y es necesario hacerlo porque valdrá la pena. Okay, así que la, solo me responden a esta, pero una, formulamos, we're going to create one question and we, and we finish. So the answer is, I like, I like apple pie. I like coffee. So what are the questions for this one? The questions, let's create the questions. For the first one, what can be a question using wood? I like apple pie. What is the possible question for this one? Uh, would would be like, or would you like to order an apple pie, or would you like to have a a dessert? I like the second one. Uh, what would you like to have as a dessert, or would you like to have a dessert? Uh -huh. And then I say I like apple, an apple pie. Okay. And what about the second one? Any anybody else? Second. The second one is like the the last example that you was teaching us. Okay, so that would be like what? What? Would you like to drink? What would you like to drink? Okay. Nice. Well, class, that'll be it for today. Please work on the platform if you haven't finished. And I'll see you on Monday. Okay, try to rest if you can, and then try to study, and that's how, how it works. The more you practice, the better it is. What, did you investigate what the ever pays off means? No, I said it last time. Remember that the effort pays off, the effort pays off. Don't, don't forget that, and I'll see you next class. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, good night.